guys remember Tamagotchis? They were kind of a big deal back in the early 90s. They were basically a pet that you would take care of and play with and they came on these really small electronic devices. They're pretty primitive by today's standards, but I didn't know that many people growing up in the 90s that didn't at least have one of these things at some point. So why am I talking about Tamagotchis? Well, because today we're playing Monster Rancher 2. Monster Rancher 2 is kind of like the video game equivalent of a Tamagotchi. You take care of monsters and generally just have fun with them. In this game, however, you train it in the attempts to unlock its true potential. It isn't really a game that you play as much as it is a casual experience where you grow as a trainer yourself and take care of various monsters. It's more of a learning experience if anything as there's no 100% right way to train a monster. In fact, the monsters have their own personalities, likes and dislikes, and a lot of the fun is just figuring out what might be the best way to train a specific monster. The most direct comparison this game usually gets is to Pokemon because training monsters was starting to become a big thing. I mean, you had Pokemon, Digimon, and Monster Rancher all coming out within a couple of years of each other. This game really isn't anything like Pokemon, aside from the fact that you have different creatures that you can take care of. Instead, this game focuses on forming a relationship with one creature at a time. Yes, you do inevitably have to fight them, but it's more about the experience and the journey that you take with your creature. The game isn't really easy to explain to someone who's never played it before, so why don't I just show you? It's my first day of being a monster rancher. But uh oh, you're not ready just yet. First, you gotta take a test. I think that work is more important than romance. I'm the type of person who saves his favorite food until last. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. I have never lied in my entire life. I believe that aliens exist. Um, what kind of test is this? We're then assigned an assistant named Cole who acts as our voice throughout the game. She essentially just provides commentary to what's going on and gives you helpful hints about the status of your monster. Speaking of which, can't be a monster rancher without a monster, so let's head down to the marketplace and grab one. There is a few different ways of getting monsters. You can go to the marketplace to choose from three different types. One of the monsters will at least change seasonally, so you'll have to check back every so often if you're looking for something specific. The other way to get a monster is to combine two of your previous monsters. You can do this by freezing them and then combining them. Doing that essentially combines the traits of your previous two hosts together. I made a thing. By far the best way of getting a creature though is to use the s the the uh, disc stone. Disc uh disc shrine? This thing. This is probably one of the coolest parts of the entire game. What this essentially lets you do is use any CD in your house to try and get a monster. Got a bunch of useless CDs in your house taking up a bunch of space? What do you even do with those? If only there was something I could do with these. Oh my god, it's the big moment! I regret to tell you that this rare monster can only be reproduced by an authorized IMA trainer. Oh man! Well, let's try that again with a different CD. It worked! Oh my god, I'm so excited! Whatever it is, I'm gonna take care of the crap out of it! I love it! It looks like I got my very own, uh, that thing. A bit scary looking. Nah. So now we have to give it a name and take it back to our ranch. Uh, let's see, he looks kind of like a cross between Voldemort and a snake, so how about Slytherin? With two ends. Now we're back at the ranch and this is where the majority of the game is going to be taking place. Most of the time you're just going to be training your monster. And you can do that by doing a variety of different drills, each representing a different stat that you can increase. Yeah, raise that strength Slytherin! I believe in you! Yeah! Three hole power? That's probably really good. This is why Tamagotchi is probably the most comparable thing to this game. You don't really control your monster, instead you just kind of watch it do different things. Yes, Slytherin, go! Go! Read it! Read that book! Alright, I knew you could read. Books. Let's see how you did. Oh, one point.
Oh. Remember that time I accidentally sold you? Don't make me do it again! Could you guys even imagine if in real life things were graded like a Monster Rancher drill? Juggling a ball! Success! Playing video games! Success! Going to sleep! Success! Playing more video games! Success! Editing videos! Failure! One of my favorite things has to be just watching your monster go about its daily routine! When you're not training it or you're talking to someone, he's always in the background doing whatever. Slytherin and I do believe all snakes like to do backflips. Apparently. Actually, he likes to do them a lot. It's kind of annoying, actually. But I guess it's better than lounging around- GET OFF Slytherin! You're making me look bad in front of the entire YouTube! You know what, that's it! We gotta get you into tip-top shape so we can get some money! No more screwing around! It's time for... A training montage. Hey look, it's a training montage! Look right here, it's a training montage. It's a montage and there's a montage. After all that train that I put Slytherin through, I thought it was a pretty good idea to send him off to fight monsters. Not because I thought he was ready in any way, but because I am broke now. So here we go, my first official tournament. Slytherin's gotta defeat at least four other monsters to secure the win. And that means fighting all manner of disturbing creatures. Like this bunny. Now the battling system is actually pretty fun. The battles can play out in two different ways. You can watch your monster make his own decisions, or you can take direct control and do the moves yourself. The rule of thumb here is that you only have 60 seconds to do whatever you want. So no matter what, after 60 seconds, the battle is over and a victor is decided. The winner is always decided by the monster with more health. So essentially that means you have to be as strategic as possible to do as much damage before 60 seconds is over. Every monster is different and employs different strategies to win. That's what makes it so much fun. Come on, Slytherin, you can do it! Defeat this eyeball guy! Hit him! Hit him! Foolery! The foolery! No, don't get licked! Slytherin, no, the foolery! Uh-oh, it looks like he is a big disappointment. But on the other hand, snaking second place got him to fame. Ah, uh, yeah! Please, everyone, stay back, I know. To fame. To fame, I know. I know. To fame. Now that Slytherin is obviously super famous and I still need a lot of money, it's time to send him to the big leagues. We're talking about the New Year's Cup $4,000 pot. Don't let me down, Slytherin. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. It's okay, though. It's okay. Be calm, be calm, be calm. All we have to do is hit her and then avoid attacks the entire time and we'll still win. Yeah, we can do this! <laughs> mistakes were made and I don't really got much to say um, to fame it's okay slither we just need to train you a lot more let's just head back to the farm it'll all be okay uh what's happening Slytherin Slytherin <gasps> oh no he's dead I don't know why he's dead I blame myself I pushed him too hard. I'm not a good trainer. I made a lot of mistakes. Now, Slytherin paid the ultimate price. Wow, this is actually really grim. I don't think I've ever played a game like this where your creatures could actually die. I even had to look up what factors into your monsters living longer. And as it turns out, it's a lot of different things, most of which aren't tracked in the game at all. As it turns out, I may not be the proest of ranchers yet, because I was feeding Slytherin a food he didn't like the entire time. Whoops. If you do a bunch of things that your monster doesn't like, then they get really stressed, and stress can actually reduce the lifespan of a monster by weeks, if not years. So most likely incompetence mixed with a little bit of fatal injury is what caused Slytherin to yada yada yada. No monster time! Like I said before, this may actually be the best part of the entire game. Hunting for the coolest monster to train through all of your CDs. This is your life now. Get used to it. In fact, it's almost kind of like a fashion show. Work it, yeah, okay. What are you again? Oh, you're beautiful. You have really pretty eye. Blink that eye at me. Ooh. Can we get the next person on? Send the next person out. Oh, you're beautiful. Work it. Yeah. Next. Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys really gotta stop monkeying around. What is that? Is that, is that a freaking leopard print wall? I'm done! Eventually, I had to make a decision on the monster I was going to train next. Wait, no, it wasn't this guy. I decided on this thingy who's a mix between a gel and a plant. 
and his name is Taco Bell. Taco Bell went on to lead a long and fruitful life. He ended up getting so famous that he was invited on expeditions by other adventurers. He even discovered some rare monsters. Eventually, he was invited out to represent the entire continent for his rank. He punched sharks in the faces and fought giant enemy crabs, discovered long-lost treasures and civilizations, learned some totally sweet new moves, and best of all, he made me a lot of money. Get that money. Get that money. And that, in a nutshell, is Monster Rancher 2. It's a fun little game, and I must admit, after spending so much time with one of your monsters, you kind of grow attached to them and you want to see them succeed. And you know, I feel like I've learned a lot about myself and how to be a professional monster rancher. It wouldn't be right if I didn't impart some of my monster rancher knowledge onto you guys so that you can go out and be the most professional monster ranchers you could ever be. Ever. So I put together a little guide for you guys. Enjoy. Hey guys, this is XXX Swag Hamster XXX. Today I'm going to show you how to play Monster Rancher to be the best rancher in the world. Let's be, 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 be. Train that monster like there's no tomorrow. Mud soil, mud soil, and please. Eat you, drag him over. Is your monster tired and stressed? Because you need one more. Go ahead. Wasp, 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 Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like these, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. There's also a like button too. If you're into that whole social media thing, I got things for you to follow, which are on the screen right now. You should follow them. And I also want to take a moment to shout out my Patreon supporters. So, a very special thanks to Harry Gaynor, Juan Holguin, Taylor Van Gilder, and Lars. If you want to see some more videos like this, then I got two videos for you to watch right there. Top 10 Silliest Guns in Video Games and The Hobbit. That's it for me guys, thank you so much for watching and for all the support you've given me. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.